Well, we travel all the way to Savannah, Georgia. Why? To learn about the science of sugar. And nobody knows the science of sugar better than the Savannah Candy Kitchen. Now, these are the people who've been doing this for over 100 years, and the Strickland family knows the science of pralines and taffy and chocolate, and I get to learn something about it. It's just, uh, I understand I have to wear this. Looks awesome. I'm Steve Spangler, and I'm all about making science fun. For the last 20 years, I've been teaching ways to turn ordinary science experiments into unforgettable learning experiences. I have an amazing team who will do whatever it takes to affect the way people think about science. And to do that, I live by one motto. Make it big, do it right, give it class. Well, here we are in the Savannah Candy Kitchen. Now, you're not in the outside retail store, you're behind the scenes. And we need to be behind the scenes, we're gonna learn about the science of making candy. Nobody knows this better than the Savannah Candy Kitchen than Red Strickland. Now, don't let, look at this, it's pretty young. Uh, you've been in the family, this has been in the family for a long, long time. Yes, business, sir. Right? Yes, sir. How, how long? We started 40 years ago. Um, yes, sir, my father started on Rue Street, um, 1973. And uh, we've been making candy ever since. Our so, number one item is praline, is what we're doing right here today. This is our mail order praline. And what this is, is our new formula where our sugar and crystallization in the praline is not going to occur. Our praline is typically only good for five to six days. Now we'll be able to have these things four to six months. It's a big difference. And the only difference you're telling me is like a temperature difference, right? You're really changing that temperature. A temperature difference and an inverted sugar. The inverted sugar is essentially just water and regular sugar. It has a little bit of citric acid in it, and then it lets it sit, and they just invert it for 72 hours, and they flip it back and forth. And it kind of gets the sugar into more of a, a, a gel kind of paste. And what that's letting us do is when the praline goes to get scooped, it will not be crystallized. And candy making is so crucial on temperature. If you go past 257 and get into the 260 range, which is where we cook our pralines, 257, if you get to 260, then that praline is going to become caramel. So what, at 257, it's this kind of gooey, but at 260, it starts to crystallize, right? right? And it's because you're cooking the water out of the sugar. Right? Absolutely. Yes, sir. There's two things that this powdered sugar is doing. Number one, it's firming up the praline. It is getting it to a harder consistency where we can scoop it. But another thing it's doing is the same thing that the inverted sugar is doing, like we talked about earlier. It's like reminding the grain sugar and inverted sugar, let's not get big like y'all like to do when it gets so hot. So this is just our last little uh, process we have to do. And as soon as he's done um, stirring this, we'll be ready to scoop them out on our trays. It's all about the science of sugar. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Now, I do get to try one of these pralines, right? Well, you get to try one when you get to the store. All these are already sold, so I can't let you have any of these. So you're telling me I gotta go to the store, then I get to... Yes. Marketing genius right here. All right, I'm going to the store. Thank you. Pleasure. Bye. Well, now it's your turn to make the gooeyest cookies using inverted sugar. Start with one pound of sugar, adding one to two cups of water. Really depends on where you live, but the secret is to get it to 242 degrees. Now, this is the sugar that's gonna take on that syrupy kind of consistency. And to this, you're going to add everything else that you normally would with your cookies, minus the granulated sugar. You're gonna put in your own inverted sugar. This is gonna give it that moist quality so that when you make your own cookies, they will come out absolutely perfect. Well, Rhett was right. Here we are on River Street in Savannah, Georgia, and there is the historic Savannah Candy Kitchen. Time for us to see all the cool candy inside. Just look at this, he was right. This is amazing. They've got every kind of candy that you can ever imagine. Look at this, candied apples. They've got free everything. Free praline samples over here. That's my calling, free praline samples. So did I hear you say free samples? Yes, sir, would you like to try a sample? Absolutely. So how many of these do you uh, do you make a day? Um, Usually about 12 to 15 batches a day. On a regular day, yes sir. This is perfect. You'll sell a ton. Start <laughs> boxing them now. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Awesome. All right, well, this is research and development samples right here. This is, uh, that's not, it's for the kids because I'm going to blow the candy up when we get back to Colorado in the lab. That's what I'm going to do. Well, uh, 
after uh, giving some to the people at the airport, the security guy, and those people on the airplane and everything else, this is all I got left. No worries, I got some cool experiment ideas. Back to the kitchen, and while you're waiting for those cookies to bake using the perfect inverted sugar recipe, they're gonna be really moist. I would be remiss if I didn't show you how to do a couple cool things with sugar. Well, here's what you're gonna need. Sugar, test tube, little cap, marble, ball bearing, and a bowl. Well, I'm using this plastic test tube. You could use whatever you wanted to. I just wanna see what's going on in here. So uh, a cylinder that you could uh, fill up with sugar will work perfectly, all right? So I'm gonna put it over the bowl here so I don't waste the sugar, and we're gonna fill this up about three quarters full or so with sugar. To the sugar, we're going to add, uh, let's say, the ball bearing. So the ball bearing goes there, and now the cap goes on top. So the object is to move that ball bearing from here to here as quickly as possible. Now, people are gonna shake it back and forth like this, and they're gonna spin it around, and, but it's not gonna get very far. The secret, believe it or not, is in the way that you shake it. And in order to shake it correctly, you have to think something about Newton's laws of motion. All right, the ball bearing is right here. If I wanna move it up, watch this. If I shake it up and then let it fall back down again, watch what's happening. The ball and the sugar crystals are going up and then coming back down. But in doing so, the ball has a little bit more inertia, right? Because it has greater mass. So it's gonna work its way up a little bit more and those crystals of sugar are gonna work its way under the ball. And there it is. So as fast as you can kind of shake it up like this, you can see that you can get it to the very top. Now here's how I want you to experiment. That was a ball bearing, and you may not have a ball bearing at home, but you might have a marble. Now the marble doesn't weigh the same as the ball bearing, so you can do a comparison. Why is this important? I'll show you why this is important, because this is how you're gonna get your toy surprise. Everyone wants their toy surprise, but did you hate it when your brother or sister would take their grimy little hands and reach down like this and go through everything to the very bottom to get, well, no, that's a cereal, but to get their toy surprise? Of course, you can make the toy surprise show up at the very top just in the way you shake the box. So look at this. If you have the box like this, you now can take it and shake. Listen, perfect. You're now working it up like this. Shouldn't take many of them. And there it is toy surprise at the top. See, and you thought this wasn't gonna be useful. What did I get this time? Oh look. They give me a straw. Probably to suck up all the milk from the bowl when you're done. It's a pretty useful toy surprise. It's awfully big though. Well, for this one, you're going to need some tissue paper, a paper towel roll, uh, some rubber bands, stick, and some sugar. Here's how you're gonna rig this. So you're gonna take the paper towel roll and a piece of tissue paper, that thin paper, stretch this over the end like this, being careful not to tear it because it is so delicate. And you're going to wrap the rubber band around the very end. All right, if I were to take the stick, and put the stick through like this, we would puncture it with no problem at all. What would happen if I added some sugar? All right, here's the sugar. Perfect. Just in case, this goes here. All right, let's push it down through and see what happens. Yeah, look at this. No problem at all, and as expected, pokes it right through. Let's do it again. Well, now you know why we have multiple pieces of tissue paper, right? Another one over the top like this. Rubber band goes around, set. And the law here is anything that's worth doing is worth overdoing. Let's fill up the whole thing. Perfect. All right, I know what you're thinking. It's gonna be a mess, and you're right. Watch this, as we jam it down like... <sighs> you cannot push the stick through. In fact, it's a great demonstration to be able to show that the force that's exerted here is not exerted here. Why? Because those sugar crystals are actually absorbing the force and pushing outward on the container. You might be able to see it a little bit better if we use this. Look, same kind of tube here. You can see the force. As I'm pushing here, you can see that sugar pushing up. Look at this. Ah, no matter how hard you push, amazing. All it takes is just a little touch here 
and there it goes. For the next experiment, you're going to need these things, some powdered sugar, some regular sugar, uh, some simple lab equipment, uh, a torch, safety glasses. This is great. It is time to go to the warehouse. It's chemistry. Well, this is where we need safety glasses, and we're also going to need to have a strong oxidizer. This is where we're using this oxidizer here called potassium chlorate. And this is the part where I have to tell you, don't try this at home. Try it at a chemistry teacher's home, wait until you get to college, I don't care, just don't try it at home. Potassium chlorate has oxygen molecules that we can liberate fairly easily with some heat and an organic material. And potassium chlorate has a fairly high melting point. That's why we're going to need to use some fire. You can see that it's finally melting. It's just about ready for some gummy bears. So let's see how much energy we can release by simply dropping three of the gummy bears into our strong oxidizer. Watch. There's a tremendous amount of energy being released in just three gummy bears. The strong oxidizer touches the organic, which is the sugar. In fact, we're just figuring out how much energy is trapped in three gummy bears. What remains from this smoky mess is just a small amount of carbon that's at the bottom of the beaker. Well, that's a classic version from a few years back, right? It's what every chemistry teacher does using gummy bears because they release the energy. But I think we have something from the Savannah Candy Kitchen. We have those amazing pralines. All right, let's see what we've got here. Let's pick one, our fave. They leave me one. Higginsworth! Well, just like before, we've got to melt the potassium chlorate, right? Strong oxidizer, so when we drop the sugar in there, it can help us release that energy. Need I remind you not to try this at home, right? This is something that you do in a chemistry lab or in our warehouse here where we've got the proper ventilation. It's almost melted. Perfect. And now, we just need to sacrifice the praline. Seems sacrilegious. Give me just a little bite. Ugh. Can we time out for just a second? I know it's cooling down. It's the last one. Person ate them all. All right, let's see how well it does. Here we go. Amazingly violent. It is amazing. In fact, I've never seen it. It's like a jet engine. You could fuel an engine with this. Now that's a tremendous amount of energy with a praline. Well, in order to make candy, believe it or not, you need to know something about the chemistry of sucrose. And this is a simple sucrose molecule. Take a look, the black here represents carbon. There are 12 of the carbons. There are 22 hydrogens, which are the white ones, and there are 11 oxygens that you see here. And the difference between somebody who really knows how to make candy and somebody like me who's just cooking sugar is that the chef knows how long to cook that sugar so that they can literally just make the water molecules start to evaporate. Well, we're not gonna cook that molecule, there is a way using some chemistry that we can make all of those water molecules come right off. For this, we're gonna need gloves and powdered sugar. And the powdered sugar goes into the beaker like this. And that's the perfect amount. And the reason for the safety glasses and the gloves, this bad stuff right here, sulfuric acid. If you read the label, you would think that sulfuric acid is strong. It says 18 molar, which indicates the strength of the acid. However, chemically speaking, it's a fairly weak acid. The real danger around sulfuric acid, believe it or not, is when it gets in contact with water. And since we know that there's water there and sugar, it should be an easy way for us to pull it out. So here's what happens. We take the sulfuric acid and pour the sulfuric acid into here, and now we mix it around. Watch what happens as it starts to turn black. We mix it around like this and really get it mixed up. It starts to become very, very, very hot as we mix it, and now watch what happens when it takes off. What you see coming off is all of that water vapor, some fumes, and of course we have the black carbon remaining from that simple sugar molecule. 
What am I gonna do with all this sugar? I don't know, but I've got a lot. And I haven't asked you what you wanna do with the sugar, so I'll hold on to it. And in the comments below, tell us your favorite project, a great science fair experiment, a great idea, and who knows, might show up in a future Spangler Effect episode. But fortunately for me, I saved just the last little bit, just for me. Not Higginsworth, just for me. It's good stuff. So really, I'm gonna limit myself. I really, all I need is that sucker. That sucker and this taffy, and I am good. But I need to have these little butterscotch things too, but I just need three of those. Three of those, and this, probably need to have two of these as well. So that's all I need, I'm done. And this, I'm gonna need four of those. That's all I'm gonna need. I need two of these as well. That's it, I am done. I'm gonna need to have some of this as well, so don't worry about it. That's all I need. Oh.